Today's guest is a world-renowned thought leader on self-care and financial empowerment for women. She spent two decades facilitating trauma counseling and then transitioned it into speaking and the coaching industry. She's a personal development author and obsessed with helping women create their epic lives. Through her wildly popular books, Primetime Success, Confessions of a Self-Care Junkie, and Exposed, Diary of a Self-Care Junkie, TV show, Women Who Lead, numerous speaking engagements, media presence, and free online content distributed across all of her social media channels. She is teaching ambitious women how to stand in their fierce feminine power, becoming confident to create the life and business they desire using self-care and the law of attraction. She's been featured almost everywhere. ABC, NBC, Fox, Thrive Global, Yahoo Finance, Authority Magazine, and so many podcasts. She also hosts a TV show that features and empowers women. Women Who Lead recently wrapped up season three and features local women in business doing epic things. Please meet Christy Primer, a woman on a mission to build healthy and wealthy women one conversation at a time. Oh my gosh, girl, that was a mouthful. That's so much and so, so grateful that you are here to visit with us because there are so many people that I think are struggling, especially as we're coming out of, you know, COVID and all the things that are like, okay, it's time, it's time to get back into it. So let's jump into this conversation because I think this is going to be super helpful for so many people. So your backgrounds in counseling, and how did that provide like a natural transition for you to helping empower women? Because I think they're very similar. Like what made you go in that direction? Yeah, awesome. And thank you so much, Jillian, for having me. Um, you know, 23 years of helping men, women, and youth, you know, improve their self-esteem, self-confidence, and deal with some pretty heavy, uh, dif- difficult things in their lives was really w- rewarding, but also for, you know, self-care for myself became a lot of, uh, draining after, you know, the things that were shifting and what I was dealing with. So the side of that was the mentorship, the coaching that you do in, in a therapeutic relationship, in a counseling relationship without having to get into all the nitty gritties. And so transitioning from trauma counseling into success mentorship was very natural because people improving their confidence, their self-esteem, going after their dreams, living the life they want, better relationships. It's hand in hand and so rewarding. So it was my next move uh, in my own company and in my life. Oh, that's awesome. Now, what area do you see women, like what do we need the most help with when it comes to empowering ourselves in our business and also our finances? Because I feel like that could be a big one. Yeah, I would say owning what you want without apologizing for it. So confidence. I love it. I love it. And you're so right, because I feel like a lot of times, depending on how we're raised, we might not have that confidence naturally. And so we got to work on it. Always. You know, I always tell my clients what you see within me and how I present myself is a daily journey. This didn't, I didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm confident. And now I'm never, ever going to need to work on myself. It's a consistent journey of empowering myself as I am empowering others. And what's the best way that we could start empowering ourselves? Like, is there something that you're like, okay, this is definitely the first place to start. Cause I'm sure it's different for everyone, right? Yeah. And I would say for everyone across the board, the first place to start is to make the decision, make the decision you want to live differently. That's huge because that is just like, that's a big deal just in itself to say, okay, I'm done with where I'm at. I want to change things. I've got to make some decisions. And the first one would definitely be, I don't want to do this anymore. Exactly. And then once you make that decision, just take some action. A lot of times what I see women um, holding off from is the big leaps of faith and the big actions and investments. And I always tell them you have to start small. I believe in micro doses of change because it's consistent Uh, it's sustainable and it will pivot you into the next shift or change that you need to, to have in your life. So make the decision and then take action. It, I would think that it would be so much easier. Like if you have this big, scary, hairy goal that you're like, I want to do this thing. It's much easier to take those small steps versus just jumping into that one big thing and be like, Oh my gosh, here we go. 
So what's the best way for someone to grow their confidence As it relates to business, because we've probably got people listening that are like, you know what, I really feel called to do this thing, whatever that thing is. It could be a business, it could be financial decisions, whatever the case may be. But what do you think is the best way for people to grow their confidence, to build their business, to create that financial growth that goes with those big changes? Yeah, I think that uh, women need to stop breaking their promises to themselves, stop negotiating with your boundaries. And you will be dramatically impressed with what changes, not only in your business, but in your life, uh, in in the totality of your life. So stop breaking promises to yourself. Stop negotiating. I love that. And you know what? I think even becoming aware that you're even doing that, that you're breaking those promises to yourself could be huge because I think a lot of us have just become so accustomed to breaking those promises that we might not even realize that we're doing it anymore. Yes. Oh my goodness, Jillian, that's, that's bang on. You know, even for myself, I was thinking that I was doing all the things that I said I would do. And I would realize that certain people, especially, or certain clients, um, depending what season of my business I was in, had this ability to convince me that I could negotiate with myself. And while I do take responsibility for that, I wasn't aware of what was really happening. And so when I made the decision to not only reevaluate my boundaries, but to stick to them, everything changed. I'm so glad that you said that. Now, one thing, because we're kind of all, depending on where you live in the country, a lot of us are kind of starting to transition from being at home and running our businesses with like little in-person connection. You know, of course we have Skype and we have Zoom and all those things, but like physical in-person things, that's kind of starting to come back around. We're starting to see more conferences pop up and things like that. What are your best tips for getting back out into that world and creating the confidence to begin networking again and going to those conferences and, you know, putting ourselves out there physically? What are your tips for that? Yeah, I love that question. So I'm Canadian and I'm currently living at my Florida home. And uh, a lot of things are happening here. A lot of things are on the move in person is, is next level. People are hungry for it. And for me, it was very overwhelming. So if anyone's listening they're like, wow, that's a big leap. I'm ready, but what do I do? Start small. I, the first event I went to was maybe like 25, 40, 25 to 40. I know it's a drastic number, but I think there was maybe 40 people, 25 to start. And I just slowly started mingling. And what I did was I touched base with all of the amazing people I connected with through Instagram and said, Hey, I'm going to be at this event. I would love to actually meet you in real life. And, uh, you know, that was comforting because I didn't go all alone, not knowing anyone, which I've done many times in the past and will continue to, but I just had some of that, I guess, prepped, you know, I'll meet you there. Okay. And it was a smaller event, you know, then the one after that was 500 people. And I can't even tell you how magnetic and igniting it was just to be around fellow women that are hungry for good change, doing epic things. And there's still the virtual option for those of you that aren't quite ready, you know, dip your toe a little bit, but I would say just mentally prepare yourself that you deserve to be around other humans because there's nothing quite like it. I I was just going to say that, that there's some sort of like energy when like like like-minded women come together there's just something that happens and like so many light bulb moments that come up where you're like why didn't I think of that but it just takes someone with an outside perspective to say hey have you thought about this and being together makes such a huge difference but I really like what you said where you're like I'm sure that those people that you dm'd on Instagram were probably in the same boat little bit nervous, kind of like, okay, I haven't done this for a while. What are, you know, what are we doing? Like, is it okay to like hug people? Do we stay away? Like what's kind of the, you know, the thing that we're doing now. And so being able to know that you've got people that are coming that you're going to see there, you've already talked to them. There's a comfort level there because even though you might not know them super well, but still it's a friendly face, a smile, someone to welcome you into that event. So I think that's such a good idea. Now, how can people connect with you on Instagram? Because Instagram's my favorite. I don't know about you, but where can people connect with you on social media? What's your favorite social media channel? My favorite is the gram. I mean, we're so aligned, Jillian. I love it. So I'm at Christy underscore primer and all my links and all the things are there, free resources and and content and stuff. But 
I have met some long standing friends through Instagram and of course clients and, and collaborative partners, but friendships. And I think when we use Instagram, the way it's designed to be used, it is so powerful. I completely agree. There are so many cool people out there in like this big, huge world. And without social media, we wouldn't necessarily get to meet them. Like I just talked to somebody in Australia the other day and I was like, this is like crazy, but like crazy awesome. Like it's just so cool how we can connect with people all over the world. Now, oh, yeah. one question that I have for you, this is a question that I ask every single guest because I just think it's cool to like see different people's perspectives on this question. But if you could give one piece of advice to a small business owner that's struggling, what would that be? Definitely invest in mindset. Invest in your mindset and your wealth consciousness. Oh, I love that. Tell me a little bit more about like wealth consciousness, because I feel like that's like a buzzword. I'm like, what? Say what? Yeah, I need to know more yeah. about that. Yeah. I think, you know, because for me, I'm 11 years into owning my own company now. And when I first started, I left, you know, I worked at a government agency. It was so different. And I think if I had have actually invested in my own mindset and understanding money and my relationship with money, it would have changed the trajectory of my business faster. Um, I do believe that we all have to learn and it's a journey and, you know, wisdom comes from, from learning. I do obviously understand and agree with that, but if I had have invested in a mentor or in somebody that could help me understand my own money and what that meant to me is from a wealth consciousness, instead of, oh, I want to hit 10 K months, which everybody wants to hit. It's so much more than that. It's understanding where could you hold yourself back in being successful financially in your business, let alone serving and having impact. So that's what I would recommend. Oh, that's so good. Now tell me if people are like, I need to talk to this girl, like where, like, what's the best way to connect with you? If someone wants to find out more about like wealth, consciousness, confidence, all these amazing things that you've talked about, where can people find you? I would lead, lead them back to the Instagram. My, again, all my links are there. You know, my website's there. I've got a contact page, but I have a lot of free resources and content that helps women activate their, their next level from a financial pr perspective, but also understanding what does that all mean? Cause we can read about this and hear people talking about it. And it's like, well, that's great. But what does it mean for me? Right. Right. So totally. I, I try to simplify it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, I will be sure to link your Instagram because like you said, that's the hub. I'll link that in our show notes so people can find it super easy. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I feel like this is a topic that could go so many different directions and we could chat for hours about it, but I'm just so thankful that you were here to talk with us about it. And I know that a lot of people are equally going to be excited to chat with you. So thank you again so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Jillian. All the best to you.